So we know half of here is 0 0.5. We all need to do to find it. So 5 plus 1 plus 1. This plus 1 plus 1, the whole thing, minus by 3.1, minus by 1 divided by 2. Okay, the individual centered. So this will be equal to 5 plus 1 plus 1 minus 3.1 minus 0 0.5 times 6 times 1. So it's equal to 20.4. So from here, Q is equal to VQ over I. So this is 50 is equal to V multiplied by 20.4 divided by 197.7. So V is equal to 50 multiply 197.7 divided by 20.4. So it's equal to 484.6 pound. Okay. So therefore, uh, V is equal to 316.8. That's it. Okay. So this is the part that you have to be very, very aware of. Okay, you don't need to, the analysis is not based on the flow of the Q, okay, for this case, okay, you just need to consider where the failure is, the load has been carried out by the flange, okay, right, any questions so far? So as I said, this is the, uh, the only confusing one, okay, this is the only one. The, the 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 next one I'm 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 not going to I have a few more examples to do but I'm not going I'm not going to uh do those examples okay Pro probably what I'll do is I'll I'll record or I'll do the solution for for this one online okay I'll show you how to do this okay because this one is also not straightforward because you have nails on the horizontal on both sides and on the vertical how to get the first moment of area if you apply if you apply like what I've I've taught you, okay, is is it's going to be the same thing, okay? Same as in you design the shear flow first, okay? Before I can do this example, I need to teach you another configuration, okay? And the other configuration is going to be uh sharing stress in thin wall analysis, okay? So next is going it's going to be a a, a a new section, but to do this example, okay, this example over here. You need to understand the shearing stress in thin wall first. Okay, so we are going to go into a new section. So the new section is known as shearing stress. And and this is we have we've done this halfway already. Okay, I'll I'll tell you why. Okay, so shearing stress in thin wall. Right, so in thin, so this is a new section. Yeah. So in thin watt section, okay, in thin watt section, classification. of the structure uh, so number one they are either in a box beam now you have you are familiar with this term already box beam or the next one you have not heard before or i'm going to introduce to you or the second one is a white flange okay so these are these are the these are the thing, okay. So now let's look at the diagrams, okay. So again, you will have this in your in the notes. So what you see over here, as you can see, you're familiar with. That is known as the box beam. And then the next one. That is, so the one on the right is the white flange. Okay, so on the left. 
So this is the box beam. And the white of the one on the right is known as the white flange. So a note of relief, I'll tell you what's the note of relief, okay? A note of relief is formula are still the same, okay? So when it's thin wall, okay, when, 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 we, do, uh, when we do thin wall analysis, the, the blessing is this, okay? The, the blessing is such that in the analysis, right, the formulas are still the what? The formulas are still the same, okay? The formulas are still the same. So for thin wall, we still note that Q is equal to VQ over I, still the same. The shear is equal to VQ over IT. Right, this formulas nothing change, okay? But after this, oh shoot, but again, right? So for this case, T direction is perpendicular, right, to the shear flow. Q. Okay. So what do I mean? Okay, what do I mean? For this case. Okay. If I have a point, okay, or if we have a point over here, if we have a point over here, and we call this alpha. Okay, this point is alpha, right? And we have a point over here also, somewhere around here, we have a point alpha. Okay, point alpha at the dot. And then we have a, a point over here, and, and that point, we call it our C, okay? C, we have our point over here, we also call uh, our points, point C, okay? Now, for thin wall, the thickness is perpendicular to what? To the shear flow. So all these thin lines that you see, all these are all your what? Your shear flow direction. So the thickness now is this thickness, T at alpha. At point C, the thickness is here, T at point C prime, okay? Over here, Q1, right? The thickness is here. This is your thickness at alpha. And then for this case, this is your what? Thickness. So at, at point alpha, right, if it's thin wall, the thickness is different from the what? The thick wall. So if we go for if we, if we go for thick wall analysis, so I'll, 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 I'll bring this example. So this is thick wall. Okay, so yeah. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bring this example. Okay, what we have just done before, right? So for this case, right? So this is thick wall. Right? The thickness is this thickness. T. Let's say if you want to find the point alpha over here, the thickness is 12 inch. Yes or no? Right? For thin wall, it's not the, the width anymore. It is the direction that is perpendicular. It's the geometry that is perpendicular to the shear flow. Yes or no? However, for thick wall, this is also the thickness, right? This is also the thickness, right? For, for thin wall, it's the same. The thickness are the what? Are the same. <laughs> okay, because it's what? It's perpendicular to the shear flow, okay? But an interesting thing is this, okay? If you want to find alpha, okay? So let's say this is alpha, right? Because of how... The shear is distributed, the shear flow is distributed. You have to consider left and right. Okay? For what? For, for box beam, right? If you look at white flange, right? You only need to consider the left 
you don't need to consider the what? The right side. Okay, that is the difference. I repeat again. For box beam, if you want to find the point alpha, you have to consider because the start. So this is the this is this is this is the terminal. I won't call it start. This is the terminal. The terminal goes left and right. For this case, the terminal is at point A. And then A prime, there's another what? Terminal. To alpha, the terminal at A has the influence of alpha. The terminal at A prime has no influence on what? On alpha. Okay, I will not, I will not call it the start. I call it the what? The terminal. Okay, so likewise, point E and E prime or E prime, they are all our what? Terminal. Okay, terminal is like an airport, you know, take off or land, the, the, the point where things start or the point where things end. Okay. So, for thin wall, the next thing, the T is perpendicular to the junction and where uh, and you guys will be relieved. You still need to apply. Okay, you still need to apply these rules. These rules still the same. Okay, someone has question. Um, yeah, so uh, the first question that I have is when do you use thin wall versus when you use thick wall in real world scenarios? So in, in this course, I will tell you in the real world, there's a ratio that you have to work out. Okay, so in, 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 in those of you who are civil engineering, they have a handbook. Okay, they will call this a thin wall section. So it's classified already. Okay. Okay. So that's how we identify them. And what's your second question? Uh, so the other question would be, what if, let's say, in the I-beam, you have to analyze a point uh, theta uh, somewhere along the E section? What area should we consider? And okay, we so, so let's say you have a point down here. Yeah. Beta, right? Yeah. Apply rule number four. You just analyze here. And only in that size, regardless of where the direction of the... Of yes, the... because of the terminal, right? Okay. So rule number four, what? First moment of area cannot cross or intersect the centroid. So that's why you cannot consider, you cannot, you cannot consider this area. You cannot consider this area, right? Right. Okay. Sorry, it's not you cannot consider, you cannot say that you follow the direction of the arrow, you consider everything down here. You can't do that, right? It cannot, okay. right? So, but rule number three say what? Analysis will be carried out from Y variable max. So Y variable max, right? Then because B is over here, once this thing pull back, right? It will reach here. That's why you only consider what? This area, that's it. Okay. 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 So, and then, and then yep. on the on the others on the rectangular one, uh, if it's on the on the sides. So if I it's over see, here, if it's over here, right? You consider this area. But what if it's on the side on the side wall? On 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 over side wall like here or uh, here. Go up a little more. Over here. Yeah, over here. Like, yeah, like so that. so so same thing, right? You consider this area. Okay, so you consider everything. Ah, uh, so you still need to you need to design based on these rules. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. Okay? okay. So, but you have now you have to consider left and right. For this mm -hmm. case, let's say you want to consider here, you have to take this whole area and here, if you want to consider this point. Okay. 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 That now the best. The, now the best thing is. Let's do an example, okay? So I'm gonna do one of the most confusing example, like always. I don't do I don't do easy stuff, okay? Easy stuff, yeah, no point. Let's do something like confusing, okay? So example number three, okay? Wait, when I say confusing, does not mean it's impossible. <laughs> not say Eugene should confusing again, okay? So example number three.
Okay, I would like to highlight why this is this structure. It combines box beam and white flange 